Well, is this provoked anymore? We have a little more time here. We're getting on, but, you know, well, it's, well, oh, I'm sorry, yes, one vote. Yes, you had to raise your hand before, I'm sorry. Yeah, I... Raise your hand and say it. Well, <laughs> um, I was feeling this um, kind of craziness. Oh. Uh, feeling, it felt very like the ground had gotten pulled out from under me. When you were talking earlier about um, eras as a force as opposed to an archetype, mm -hmm. um, this, the reason I was feeling kind of crazy was because Jungian thought has been a lot of what I use to sort of build a sort of solid container for my life. I come from a very crazy family, mm -hmm. people with a lot of potential but who just sort of explode and go, mm -hmm. go nuts. Mm -hmm. I've had to go on medication and mm -hmm. I've spent years like studying, you know, all these various Jungian terminologies and trying to understand them. Mm -hmm. And I had never stopped to think about, about uh -huh. Eros uh -huh. as not being an archetypal image but actually uh -huh. being more like a force. Uh -huh. And so all of a sudden it was like, I don't even know what I'm thinking about or talking about. Uh -huh. And there was this moment of feeling real, real crazy. So I wanted to ask you about it, uh -huh. but I didn't want to just say, could you please tell us the difference between, <laughs> sure. say, Eros and the libido? Right. You know, or could you say something yeah. more about why Eros is a force? Um, right I, I, I do want to understand it, but uh -huh. I, I also wanted to acknowledge that it, it, it showed, showed a big sort of gap in my, my, my knowledge and understanding of it, which made me feel. Uh, very uncertain for a little bit. So uh -huh. I, I sat with that, and uh -huh. I'm okay with it. I'm really appreciating the talk today. Uh -huh. It's very, very, very uh -huh. stimulating. Oh, that's terrific. But I was, I was wondering if you could say more about uh -huh. the relationship of Eros as a force, whether uh -huh. it's equivalent to, to libido or similar to libido, uh -huh. and how it sort of sets off the, the experience of the double uh -huh. as, a, as an archetype. Uh -huh. I was wondering how there were the connections between them a, a little. I was trying to understand that a little better. Uh -huh. Well, wow, I'm, I'm just delighted that you would uh, pose that, Wendell, in terms of how you feel. <laughs> Again, well, it might seem simple, mm -hmm. you know, just check out anyone on the news. Watch our public figures speak and react and stand and relate. And picture, are they feeling their feelings in their bodies? Is it maybe a good idea to learn to feel one's feelings in one's body? Or to stay like our whole society is, where everyone's out to lunch? And in fact, has a trauma, because I'm in fucking infantile trauma that no one takes responsibility for. It's been going on generation after generation like this, right? So uh, how contrary that is, what you're trying to do, how hard that is to personally do, you know? You, you get no support in the general culture for any of this. You know, a lot of put-downs and, and denigration, so I want to applaud you for trying to hang in there with uh, how that felt that moment when was thrown off there a little bit as you were following it along, right. and suddenly uh, it seemed to not be so clear what was going on in the way that you could grasp, huh? Right. And cause you uh, uh, use this stuff in a practical way to work with your own psychology, it sounds like, right? Right. So it sounds like there's an area in there that's uh, a little wobbly to grasp how this is. Well, but you can see how it is, and when I'm writing this paper about the double, I'm, I'm mainly concerned with the approach like I named. Mainly in terms of ideas, mainly in terms of thoughts, mainly in terms of how to understand stuff and figure it all out. And that way I can see how you've got a reaction like that to my reading of it. It's like, oh my god, all of a sudden there was something in there that wasn't quite figure outable for you, and so it didn't fit the whole vibe and the whole situation here, or what the paper is intended to do for me personally, right? My writing of it. Ah, so I certainly had to go further than that, which is why I shared with you that this was only the precursor to my getting into the work was all about my feldness and my having to stay with it and my growth and, and, and coming someone on the inside like that where I'd been out to lunch. Uh, and then here you are sitting there, you know, having a, a reaction that shows you've been uh, working on this path yourself for some time now. Uh, and uh, it's also a continued struggle in Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I think the most important thing is how you're recovering from feeling thrown off, not the intellectual question. Of course, and with being with the process of the feltness, that's where the action is. That's great. Okay. Now, if it helps you grasp how it is uh, uh, operating for you more so, you know, vis-a-vis -vis these themes, uh, uh, then, you know, I can expand, uh, if you'd like, a little bit more on this notion of how it is that you see all the archetypes when they're like things or, or, or substantialities, like an anima. <coughs> double and a shadow and so on and so forth like that, that they only become that way because they're animated, they become alive. All the archetypes exist in the unconscious whether or not they're animated. It's like 
in a more technical way, archetypes don't exist. They're like the pre-existent pre-forms of standardized forms of meaning. They don't really exist in a way. They're like they're like tendencies toward a thing which when it comes into existence comes in you know, with certain patterns of meaning. They're always patterns of meaning. There's nothing without that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even nothing is a pattern of meaning. Yes, 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 yes. Right. So, this way in which patterns come into meaning is that level of the libido coming into forms of expression in the psyche, okay? That, that, the, the, the force that's doing that, and then Jung says an intelligence or personality within that force, it's called the arrows of the libido. Oh, okay. It's like, the, it's, like, it's like the spirit of the libido. So if you imagine electricity had a spirit that was like a person in it, but it was the person of the libido, that's arrows. That's what Jung means, arrows. Uh -huh. But when you talk about the intelligence of the, of the libido, in inner, inner intelligence, right. but as if it was a person. It means that this quite realistically, or even literalistically, he means these metaphors as if they're true. That in, within the energy that is all the, of the psyche, whatever's in the psyche only there because of energy. It's like, this, this chair is only energy congealed, you know? Physical matter is only energy. There's only energy. There's only forms of energy. So it is true on the inside as well as the outside. Because this is all technologies for grasping the subjectivity of subjectivity, right? We're going to call it, Jung calls it the objectivity of subjectivity. You know, we're going to have some errors, obviously, when we're addressing this. But it's always so. And that's why it has flummoxed humanity from the beginning. Meaning, well, how to be self-reflective. It's not taken for granted to be self-reflective. It is a puzzle. It is a challenge. It is a terrible difficulty. It is a curse which may indeed destroy the planet. Self-awareness. So, here I've made an association between self-awareness and homosexuality, right? This is not homosexuality, the double of them. We're talking about homosexuality, it's in rest of the level of errors. And so it infuses the double archetype in a homosexual direction, rather than a heterosexual direction. When in a heterosexual direction, it would support uh, heterosexual love. The heterosexual double will be there to support the heterosexual anima. And that's going to lead to breeding and the mentality of breeding. Which is very charming and all that if that's your goal and aim and interest. <laughs> maybe that's not the human purpose. If we evolved into that, but maybe that's not where it's going. Wouldn't that be a shock? Wouldn't it be a shock if someday there was no breeding? <laughs> I don't know about you, but it's a hard to picture. How could that possibly be? What? A human species without any breeders? And breeding? And hetero pumping? And babies? Like that? And the whole thing like that? I would, what? What? Ooh, I'm foaming at the mouth now. I'm collapsing in epilepsy. <laughs> I mean, that's how they are about it. You know, they really are. Even now, right? So our supposed progressive liberal society, right? Strikes me as crude as ever. As primitive as ever in these terms, right? Which is why there needs to be a homosexual analysis and deconstruction of heterosexuality. It is essential that there be this. That this approach, see, it comes in this you know, psychoanalytic union form because that gets at the real depth of the spirit. So this is a funny postmodern recombination of science and the sacred, but it's not religion, meaning belief. There's no belief about it. It's nothing to do with belief. So that's again a little drifting off your question, Wendell, but nonetheless apropos, I suspect for the larger context. So you get the sense maybe that you're infused by the, I call it um, um, homosexual arrows then, once it differentiates, it was originally not differentiated arrows. But when we develop a, a genital uh, particularity, it, 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 it itself wants to differentiate, the arrows differentiates and becomes genital. And it shows its, its interest. And then it picks us. So it's supposed to be homosexual arrows. Or uh, if we personify her, Fun fun is Aphrodite Urania, as I've often described it. Okay, that's then the animal aspect of it. We pick the male aspect of it too, is the love object, the double love object as well, but all informed by the intelligence of the arrows. So that's a more subtle understanding. It has to do with what in Jungian terms called libido theory, which is a more fundamental level of theoretical understanding of the construction and operation of subjectivity. And libido theory underlies uh, the theory of complexes and archetypes, as such as content, you know, subtopics, topics of content, rather than processes. So it's a different level to be at the level of the process. 
but it's more it's about homosexual process then versus heterosexual process the thing you've done a little nurse and differentiating before they're not the same that's right once it's the arrows the intelligence uh, the libido differentiates the genital interest uh, it, it's not it loses something and then it specializes it's not possible to be undifferentiated like all life differentiates and so too does the the libido and that's his intelligence. Okay, great. Well, this has been stimulating. Thank you very much, Michael.